careful with your movement. This afternoon we're heading back into that big oak tree on the edge of that small clover plot overlooking the open gate. And this is where I've been hunting that buck that I've nicknamed the wide 10. As I mentioned last time we went in and hunted this spot, we've cleared out this ditch so we can come in through the back, the back door into this food plot rather than going right across the plot and into the tree. It makes the job of getting there a lot harder, but we do keep our human scent away from any place that the deer might stumble into it. I can't believe that. That's crazy. <laughs> it's uh, it's probably four o'clock. 
maybe even maybe even earlier and that doe squatted when she came out on that point she squatted and peed and i said to drake there's got to be a buck behind her because usually they'll squat like that just to show the buck whether they're in heat or not <laughs> and then he stopped right there facing me again just like he did the last time and i thought we're gonna have another one of those exact encounters where i'm gonna stand here at full draw for a minute and then he's gonna end up not offering me a shot we took a couple of steps and perfect broadside, 30 yard shot. That is awesome. That's one of the funnest hunts I've had in a long time. Four, three and a half, three hours before the end of legal shooting time, and there he is. <laughs> well, we don't need to stay up here any longer. We're going to go down and look at him. This is going to be the easiest recovery job I've been on in a long time. <laughs> that is cool. That's the one we've been after the whole season. Day 16, I think, we're up to. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The, the interesting part on this buck, too, is every time we got pictures of this deer, every time we filmed him during the summer, or this fall, it was right in this one little small area. He was the ultimate homebody buck. He wasn't going anywhere. We didn't get pictures of him on any camera, any place, other than the, the camera's right out in the middle of this food plot. So it's, I mean, every buck has a different personality once they get to full maturity, and this guy was definitely a homebody. The other thing we've seen on these deer too is once they get past a certain age, uh, they tend to be more daylight active and that definitely proved out with this buck he was he was out dogging that doe at 3 30 and that's three hours a little more than it'd be, it'd be more than three hours from the end of legal shooting time and this deer was already out dogging a doe so i mean i love it when they do that it sure makes uh hunting them a lot more fun i've hunted my share of bucks that were nocturnal and you never even see them. It's fun to hunt some that occasionally are very daylight active like this one. Another thing that's probably just as big a factor as any on this deer was uh, that doe. And the first hot doe in any mature buck's core area is gonna bring him out. And I'll bet you that doe is either hot you know, in estrus or she was very close to it. So if you can find, you gotta be around the does, but if you can get lucky enough and catch that first hot doe in the area where that buck that you're hunting is living, I'd almost lay odds he's gonna be on that doe because they're excited and ready to go. The rut's just getting rolling and there's a estrus doe to, to be had. And, and these mature dominant bucks are gonna be the ones that try to find them. Later on in the rut, it becomes less and less critical because you know there, there's more does coming in, but that first one it attracts all the attention. 